بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہر ایکسلنسی دا فرس لیڈی ہنربل کو چیئرز ایکسلنسیز دستنگویشت پارتسپنس السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتو It is great pleasure to taking part, taking part in this important event. Let me first echo and in full agreement of what has been said by, key, by previous keynote speakers, and I am committed with my colleagues to consider the ask, asks during these, their speech in our uh, table of negotiation with the other sides. Unfortunately, since the past 42 years, the people of Afghanistan are suffering, and this suffering is continuing until this day. Each day, we witness lives being lost, people being displaced, homes and property destroyed, ordinary Afghan, mostly women and children, being trapped in fire zones, kidnapped, and most dreadfully, some become victim of extra judiciary punishments, killed or even beheaded by the tourist groups. This is one side of the daily reality of the country. This is why we should put a responsible end to this war. There are thousands of painful and heartbreaking stories of how Afghans suffer from this war. Most of these stories reveal how deep these wounds are, which could have dire and unimaginable consequences socially, economically, and even psychologically, especially for women and children who are affected the most and have suffered deeply in different phases of war and violence over this period. Talking with Taliban under the current complicated environment at national, regional, and international level, at a time when we are facing threats from a wide range of terrorist networks, spread of radicalism, growing mistrust, and uncertainty, in addition to the impact of COVID-19, and more importantly, the narrow-minded world vision of Taliban is a difficult and bumpy road. But, the, but this is the surest way to achieve peace when we continue a meaningful discussion and talks with the Taliban to make the progress and to achieve a common goal for our country. Given these realities, managing peace talks need patient, caution, and most importantly, a collective effort in the most effective way possible. It is important, for example, to assess and examine conditionality reflected in the U.S.-Taliban agreement. If the undermined will impact directly on the negotiating table, I believe rushing without reaching a comprehensive ceasefire and peace agreement where human rights and rights of women, vulnerable groups, and uh, are ensured as reflected in Chapter 2 of our Constitution. I believe that if that is not ensured, could end up to a situation where Afghanistan may once again descend into a new cycle of violence and chaos with the potential to threaten global peace and security. Moreover, long-term and sustained peace is not possible without ensuring the rights of all Afghans, especially women and minorities. We all know that since the fall of the Taliban regime, how hard women fought for their rights and what ordeal they had to accept and ensure to achieve this level of progress. They are now worried for the right reasons of losing these hard wins. As such, we believe, as all of our international, national and international partners do, that sustainable peace in Afghanistan will not be achieved without active, meaningful engagement and participation of women with their voices heard and inputs incorporated in any peace agreement and in, and in the end state. Victims of war and return, returned refugees is another increasingly large part of our population. Any future agreement must ensure that their wounds are healed, their voices are heard, and their future is protected. 
This requires a comprehensive whole of government in nationally driven and mobilized and internationally supported uh, <coughs> programs. Afghanistan hoped that after the 29 February deal between U.S. and Taliban and subsequent release of prisoners and start of the peace talks, violence will reduce in the country. Unfortunately, that did not materialize and ended quite the opposite happened. The recent increase in violence in Helmand, Kandahar, as well as in the north and northeast of the country, not only took many lives, but also caused forced displacement of thousands of Afghans, adding to the many miseries and already suffer. Again, this mostly affected by those consequences were women. Fortunately, today, there is a collective voice in support of women participation in peace talks, starting with the leadership of the Afghan government, especially His Excellency the President and the First Lady, as well as women leaders, civil society activists, and political leaders, the UN and our international partners. They all call for women participation at all stages of peace process, from the planning to negotiation to implementation. They are true agents of change and loud voice for human rights, the rights of victims, and dignified return and reintegration of refugees. I am proud of the very active and leading role of women in the negotiating team. As most of you are familiar with them, they are highly proactive, capable, and courageous people who came from the roots of the Afghan society and closely connected with women civil society networks in the country, both at the center and rural parts of the country. Most importantly, they not only fight for women's rights, but for the rights of all Afghans, including vulnerable groups. Indeed, they fight for justice, for equality, and for sustained peace. The presence of women at the negotiating table is an asset and showed the face of new Afghanistan that has changed. Taliban seeing this change and they understand that they are facing with a different country than they had seen or imagined. I will not talk about the details of what they have done. They will speak for themselves. Their rights cannot be sustained and ensured unless they are clear, they are, they are clearly protected in the Constitution, in the final peace agreement, with enforcement and guarantees. As such, continued international support is required to enable as an, institutionalization, an institutionalization of the rights in the transition from conflict to sustainable peace. Violence will not end in Afghanistan unless the problem of Afghan refugee is dealt with properly and sustainably. They were, <coughs> they, they were, and they were, they are, and they will be the target of recruitment by the terrorist network or those who abuse them for continued instability in Afghanistan. Therefore, planning for two very important aspects of reintegration into the normal life each refugee return and reintegration and demilitarization of society at village levels should start immediately and must be, and must be supported properly. And this should be part of the agenda of the discussion. Afghanistan need more support during this phase of transition in transformation from violence to peace, especially in the, especially in the process of preserving and building on the valuable achievement of over the past 19 years. We should not repeat the past experience that caused so much suffering to the Afghan people. Today, once again, we are facing with a very difficult test. We must prevent at all costs the repeat of history and do not allow once again Afghanistan and the world for that matter to be trapped into the violence, the, to the very vicious circle of a new game, but reach a sustained peace where Afghanistan become home for all Afghans, a good neighbor to the region and a dependable partner to the world. I thank all of, all of our partners for their support and hard efforts to help us achieve peace and prosperity in Afghanistan. Thank you very much.